All right, so a lot of you guys might not know it, but today is kind of a special occasion. Today is the anniversary of my YouTube channel. And about a year ago, I started this channel on February 13th, and we grew to now over 2,000 followers, which is kind of crazy to me, but uh, it's kind of cool. We've uh, grown the brand, we've grown the Exploring Photography channel, and all of that. So today, we're gonna go over 12 anniversary, 12 Lightroom editing tips that will up your photo game. Here's to this year, and here's to next year. <laughs> well, I guess I don't need to say it since a lot of you have probably seen my videos, but for all the newcomers, Will Simpson here, and welcome to Exploring Photography. Let's get into tip number one, which I like to call straightening up. The biggest thing that I see, especially with beginners, is their photos aren't straight. It, you know, it's something you don't really pay attention to, but once you straighten the photos, it makes a huge difference. And you can straighten your photos with anything, whether it's your phone or it's your computer, any editing software can straighten your photos. So take a minute, step back, and straighten your photos because it makes a huge difference. Now, if you're in Lightroom, all you have to do is hit this little box tool up here and straighten the photo, straighten out the horizon. Now, let's say you're not exactly specific on the horizon. Well. Click this little box, this little angle tool here, and then draw the horizon from point A to point B, and it will correct to that line, and boom, straightened photo. So when you're done editing, take a minute, step back away from the photo, look it up, because at this point, if your photos aren't straight, it's just being lazy. Don't be lazy, straighten your photos. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to tip number two, and that is auto-tone. In the beginning, when you're first learning Lightroom and you're not sure how to play with the sliders and all that, there is a little trick that allows Lightroom to adjust the basic settings um, automatically in what it thinks is the best setting. Simply go to the basic tab here, and then if you look here at tone, right to the right of that is auto. Click auto, and there you go. It automatically adjusts the settings to what it thinks is proper exposure. And that's not bad, you can work with that. It's a place to start with. And then as you get more and more comfortable, you can do it yourself. But this gives you a basic place to start. Tip number three, and this is one of my favorites. I use this tip every single photo I edit, and I edit a ton. I'm probably editing in Lightroom every single day, which might be a little overkill, but I don't think so. I enjoy it. Anyways, this tip is setting your white and black points. So let's go ahead and reset this here. Let's reset the basic field and a little quick tip, if you press or hold option and then click reset tone, it simply resets this panel rather than clicking the reset button down here and resetting the entire image altogether. Now, if you go to the whites and blacks, so how do you know what the proper white and black point is? Well, press and hold option, click the slider and then slide up until you see white and that is where your true white is. So we want it to about right there, and then black point, same thing. Press and hold option, alt, I think on Windows, but I'm not sure. So press and hold option, click the black slider, and then slide it down until you see the black there, black and blue right there. There you go, you set your optimum black and white points. Now, another quick tip, reset those. If you press shift, press and hold shift, and then double click on the sliders, it will set what it thinks is the proper point. Now you notice it cranked the whites all the way down, and that's because I haven't done the highlights and stuff like that, And but that looks really, really good. Lightroom adjusted it to where the whites and blacks were perfectly set. I think it kind of overdoes it, but it is a quick little tip to set your white and black points super fast. Okay, tip number four, and this is clipping. Now, when you get a photo and you've shot it and it's either underexposed or overexposed, how do you how do you judge? Or when you're editing, how do you judge? Well, there's a setting in Lightroom called clipping. If you go up here to the histogram area, if you click this arrow on the left, that's for the blacks and the shadows. If you click this arrow on the right, that is for the whites and the highlights. Now, you see how here it shows the little blue area? That blue indicates that that is completely black. There's oh, it's totally underexposed. Now, if I were to up the exposure, you'll see red. That red is completely overexposed. There's no detail. Now, fun little quick hot key for this is if you press J, it toggles it on and off. So press J to turn on what's called clipping or J to turn off clipping. This will show you the overexposed or underexposed points of your image. And then that allows you to edit it even better so there's no loss of data. Now this next tool is one of my favorite ones. That's why we're calling it Crop It Like It's Hot because there are so many crop overlays that you can use and you probably didn't know about. 
So if you click the crop tool up here, I think it's R on the keyboard. Yep, if you press the hotkey is R, you get this overlay here. Well, this is the rule of thirds, this is great. But if you press O on your keyboard, you can cycle through other crop overlays. And you can see different ways to compose your photo. Like this fancy one here is called the golden spiral, I think. I think it's called the golden spiral. But either way, it leads your eye from the right side in over the sunset and then around to the tree. And this is awesome. This is a great and very popular compositional tool. Now, there's more. This tool gets even cooler. If you then press Shift and O, you can cycle the layout of this. So now the circle is on the, the right side, and now it's at the bottom, and now it's at the left side, and it just completely circles all the way around until you get it to exactly how you want. And then once you get it to how you want, if you want a different one, press O. This one here shows your sizes. So four by five, five by seven, two by three. You want an Instagram photo, but you don't want to crop it four by five yet? Put on this overlay and boom, there you go. Uh, this one is just a full on grid, rule of thirds, we're back to zero. So those are really, really helpful tools to help you compose your photo just a little bit better. All right, the next tip I like to call blackout. You know, you're looking at the screen, it's backlit, there's all these distractions all over the screen. You don't know if your photo looks good. You're distracted by, you know, the files on the right and all the cool presets on the left. You don't know what you're looking at. It's just, you need to black it out so you can look at your photo individually. So let's click on this photo here. And how do you want to do it? Well, let's just press L on your keyboard. That is step number one. This kind of darkens everything in the background and gives you a centralized photo. Then if you press L again, boom, blacked out. And now you can see your photo individually and see how amazing it looks. And that is blacked out. Okay, the next one is before and afters. It is always extremely important to look at your before and afters of all of your images to see if you've pushed the edit too far or you've you've done something you didn't like or changed a setting or something. It's just always really important. So how do you do it? How do you do it quickly and easily? Well, there's a couple of ways. The first way, let's just go ahead and apply a preset here. Let's just do, I don't know, let's, let's do that one. Okay, that looks good. Good, so I've applied a preset. Photo's looking good. I'm like, you know what, that looks good. Let's up the exposure a little bit. Yeah, that's looking real fall-esque. Okay, good, now I wanna see what it looks like before. So on your keyboard, the backslash key, press that, before. Press it again, after, boom, done. But you wanna see them side by side? Okay, we can do that too. Go ahead and down here on the left side, press the YY. And there you go, you got before on the left, after on the right, and you can really easily compare. Then you can actually adjust your after photo, your edited photo while watching. So if you pushed it too far, in this case, I think the oranges are just a little too much. We're gonna scroll down here, we're gonna go to saturation, and we're just gonna drop the orange saturation. And I think the blue is a little too much as well, so we're gonna drop the blue a little. Good, that looks a little bit better. And we compare it to the other photo. Let's say the greens, I wanna bring back some of the greens. So let's go over here into saturation. Let's bring back some of the green color, bring it into more green. Okay, good, and then brighten up the luminance. There we go, a little bit more green, and the photo's better. If you wanna get out of this, simply press the YY again, cycle through the different before and after options until you get to continually seeing the before and afters. Just click that button and you'll get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Next tip we're calling flag stars and colors. Patriotic, kind of, for Lightroom, I guess. Uh, Lightroom has a very, very good organizational feature. So you have all these photos here in the bottom left corner. And let's say you wanna go through your photos and you wanna, you wanna select your, your good ones. So you can have a couple of options. Let's click this left photo on the left. Uh, you wanna star them first. So you can use one through five on your keyboard to give it a, a rating, a star of one through five. So I like this photo, I'm gonna give it a five. Uh, move to this photo, not so much, I'll give it a two, and so on and so forth. Now, six, seven, eight, and nine are colors. So let's say six, we're gonna label it to red, because I don't like it. Uh, seven is yellow, eight is green, and nine is blue. So if you see down below, you have colors that surround the photos. So that's another way to select and mark the photos. The last thing is if you wanna flag them, like you wanna, as you're going through with clients or something like that, and you wanna flag what they, their picks, their favorite ones, press P on the keyboard and that flags it. Then if you want to unflag it, press U and that removes the flag. So you have the stars, 
you have the flags and you have the colors. Once you've starred or colored your images, if you go down here to the bottom right, you'll see stars and colors. So let's say I wanna see all the five star photos. Well, I just click the fifth star and suddenly I have all those photos. Now, if you wanna unselect that, just click it again, click the five star and it'll take it away. If you wanna sort by colors, just click the color. So I want all the red photos, there we go, red photos. And if you wanna take it off, just click it again. And that is a very, very fast and easy way to go through your photos, select the good ones, not select the bad ones and move on. And kind of a bonus tip for this one. If you don't like a photo and you just wanna get rid of it altogether, just select the photo, press delete on your keyboard and it'll give you an option. You can remove this image from Lightroom and keep the raw file or the file, or you can delete from disk, which will completely remove the image and the file from your hard drive. So that's a way to clean up and get rid of all the files to kind of save some storage. But if you delete from the disk, just be careful, be warned, you can't get it back. So we're gonna cancel this because I like this image. The next tip is auto white balance. And this tip works really well with raw format files. Obviously you should always be shooting raw, but if you do shoot JPEG, it does work. It's just not gonna work as well because a raw file will record more white balance data than a JPEG. However, it's super simple. Jump into the basic panel here, click the eyedropper tool, click a neutral color in the image, and you might have to try a couple of different times here, but we're gonna select this little white waterfall part here, and boom, there we go, fixed. It does sometimes require a little tweaking, but it is super fast and gets you on the right track. The next tip I'm calling the on off switch. And this is a really cool feature because it allows you to see the adjustments you've made in the panels rather than a whole total before and after of the image. This allows you to turn off your edits of different panels. So let's go into here. Let's minimize the basic. You see these little switches, these little toggle switches on the left side. If you click them, it turns off the effects of that one. So for example, we've, we've made, messed around with the tone curve here. If I click this switch, it turns off those adjustments. So you can see the before and after of those panels. These are super helpful when you're looking to correct something or to see if you've gone too far or affected it somewhere else. And that allows you to really be specific and find those points of edits so then you can make adjustments or corrections and make your photo that much better. The next tip, and you might laugh at this one and be like, really, that's a tip? Well, you know what, I needed 12, so. Yes, it's a next tip, but it's expand your panels. When you open Lightroom, generally this panel here is a little small. Now, if you were to look at your exposure, you know, you could see it's, it's, you're adjusting it, but how much are you really adjusting it? So come over here, get that little icon there and then slide it over. And you'll notice now your exposure slider, even though it hasn't changed in actual size is much larger. And you can see, oh, well I can make baby adjustments, or you, it allows you to really fine tune your adjustments. So it may not be the biggest tip, but let me tell you, it's helped me before. And finally, the final tip, the coup de gras of this video, the one that you've been waiting for, actually you've been waiting for all of them because all of these are awesome tips. But this one is really cool, I really like it. We're gonna go ahead and click the adjustment brush. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna make sure auto mask is selected. The key here is keep the plus sign on the thing you want selected. So if we wanna select this whole rock without auto mask, if I were to click here, it's going to, let me turn on the overlay so you can see, it's gonna mask everything. You see it's running over into the horizon, but let's go ahead and delete that. Now let's click auto mask and let's do it again. Keep the plus sign on the rock. Look at that doesn't cover the horizon a bit. Now, if there are colors that are similar to it, it will overlay and it will go, it will kind of mask that as well. But if you notice, it works so much better doing this. See how it, it got this bottom right area. And all you have to do is press option and delete that part there. But the auto mask feature is amazing. Let me, let me just go zoom in. Let's say I wanna auto mask her. Well, I just paint over her and look at that. So good, it kind of overflowed here into the water, but that's because the skin tones are very similar colors to the horizon, but that's okay, easy fix. And there you go, look at that. Auto masked beautifully. Now, if I wanna adjust them and just them alone, darken, lighten, whatever I want, and it's a perfect line. So, 
There are my 12 Lightroom editing anniversary tricks that will help you in your photo game. It will make your photos that much better. I honestly, I use every single one of these pretty much every day. I hope they help you make great photos, but like the video if you liked it. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I do videos like this every Monday at 7 p.m. Comment if you have any questions or if you missed another tip or know of a tip that I need to put in there. But anyways, thank you for watching. Happy anniversary and I'll see you guys this year. Yeah, this year.